Hey everyone and welcome back to BMX News, a weekly BMX News show where I talk about everything that happened in the previous week within the world of BMX that I think you guys might care about. That being said, the first thing that we have to talk about this week is pretty exciting for those of us who are following BMX in the Olympics here in the US and maybe around the world as well who might be following it and rooting on some of these people, but the US has now announced the freestyle BMX team that will be representing the United States in the Olympics later this summer. So for the women, Paris Benegas and Hannah Roberts, if there was any question about that one, the women had first place firmly locked down and there was no question that the US was gonna get two women going to the Olympics. But on the men's side of things, it was kind of up in the air because going into the UCI Urban World Championships this past weekend, the men were tied for both the US and Australia. And coming out of that, the US gained enough points to earn the lead and get two spots for the men going into the Olympics. And with that, Justin Dowell and Nick Bruce will be representing the US for the men. There's a little bit of like kind of drama going into this because Daniel Sandoval actually placed higher than Justin Dowell at the UCI Urban World Championships, but this was not determined based on that event solely. This was determined through years of qualifications and points leading up and earning towards this spot going into the Olympics. And even though Daniel Sandoval placed higher than Justin Dowell and Nick Bruce for that matter, he did not earn enough points in that to overtake either of them and earn a spot going into the Olympics, at least from my understanding. I know there's more that goes into this than just the points and one contest and these things, and it's a culmination of different things. So there's a little bit of tension there online, but it's understandable from Daniel Sandoval's perspective because he essentially placed high enough and helped the US overtake Australia for that top spot and earn the two spots for the men to go to the Olympics. So you can see why he might be upset that he pretty much made that happen for the US. I don't know if it would have happened if he didn't place in the top five, whatever, if there was other people placed above him. I don't know if Justin Dowell and Nick Bruce placing up there would have been enough, but as unfortunate as that is for Daniel Sandoval and as understandably upset as he is, these are the people who will be representing the US at the Olympics. And of course, Logan Martin will be representing Australia as he won the UCI Urban World Championship, but we'll get to that in a second. That's the next thing we're gonna talk about. So let me know your guys' thoughts on the people that will be representing the US. Are you surprised that both men and women are getting two spots going into the Olympics? There was a very real chance with Brandon Lupos and Logan Martin at this UCI World Championship that they could have placed high enough to push Australia into that top spot and potentially earn Logan Martin and Brandon Lupos or somebody else the spots in the Olympics. So let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. And then of course, we talked about the 2021 UCI Urban World Championships. Well, they went down and all of the results are in and for the men park elite. First, we had Logan Martin, second, Daniel Sandoval, third, Mayor Rantis, then we had Justin Dowell in fourth, and Nick Bruce in fifth. So that's what I was talking about with Daniel Sandoval getting second, Justin fourth, and Nick fifth. That was enough for the US to overtake Australia in points. So then for the Women's Park Elite, we had Hannah Roberts in first, and Nikita DeCaros in second, and Charlotte Worthington in third, with Paris Benegas following up in fourth. As far as Flatland goes, Matthias Dandois won, with Moto Sasaki getting second and Alex Jumlin getting third. And then for the women, which they had a Flatland Elite class for the women, which is really cool, these are the riders who won. Irina, Julia, and Deline. They got the top three. I'm not gonna do them a disservice by butchering their names on screen right now. And I think it's pretty cool that there were enough women to have an elite Flatland Women contest at this UCI Urban World Championship. So from there, we can move on to the news that Blackout Distribution is now hiring a product photographer. There's an entire write-up on BMX Union if you wanna go and check out the details, but I'm not gonna spend any more time on it here. And that brings us into the videos from this week. First up is a video with Angie Marino from Vans and it's called Enjoy the Ride. So there are a ton of videos to talk about this week, but I wanted to talk about this one first because this video could potentially be the best video that has ever come out from a lady shredder. Angie kills everything from skate parks to the streets in here and does a lot of really good stuff at both. Transfers from bowl to bowl, doing tricks, wall rides in the streets, gaps down like a wall ride down a big like four or five block in the street, does a handrail. She does a lot of really, really, really good stuff. And it made me wonder, what are some of your guys' favorite edits that have ever come out from Lady Shredders? And is this the best one ever so far? 
I think that it very well could be, and I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on it, and Angie absolutely killed it in this one. And then obviously with Angie being affiliated with Cult, Vish would be the natural filmer for this one, and he did a great job putting it together as well. Everything flowed together. It was just a genuinely enjoyable video, so I definitely think anyone who enjoys BMX whatsoever and BMX videos can get psyched on this one. Next up is Brandon Began's pro part uploaded to the Our BMX YouTube channel. I think what I liked most about this video and Brandon's riding in general is that everything has a purpose. The spot usage is all intentional. There's usually some type of unique thing that makes it unique i know i'm repeating myself there but that's kind of what it feels like the theme of his riding is and i think that's what makes it entertaining to watch because you really don't know what's coming next because you never know how he's going to use the spot and the one that really got me psyched in the beginning which is not even a huge deal or anything but he's grinding a ledge and this ledge has this like random metal thing that goes up part way through it so he's grinding it then his tires go up and he uses that to hop to a smith past it and i just thought it was really cool and that's a perfect example of how he uses things differently and kind of just makes it more than just this is a rail for the sake of doing this rail trick on a rail and i think that creativity when people have it makes a video that much more enjoyable to watch so check this one out literally like the first clip in the video is him doing a fakie wall ride on a tree back to a smith on a ledge that's beside it first of all you got to find that spot and second of all you got to think of what to do on that spot when a lot of people would just ride by it because i don't know what to do on it basically moving on from there we had a video with van homan in japan called van in japan from fit this one is classic Van Homan. It is so good. And I'm not gonna lie, I watched it a couple days ago, so I don't remember all of it, but there's a lot of subs in here. He does this downside or topside or whatever the heck it's called when your peg is sticking up and whatever you're hitting is like this and your tire is underneath of it. It was on a spot that I'm sure is way harder to ride than it looks. And a lot of the rest of the video is just super good. No foot of cans, ice pick to bar spins, so many subs, so many wall rides, using all of these amazing street transitions that are in Japan. It seems like there's more street quarter pipes in Japan than anywhere else in the world from this video. Moving on from there, we've got a whole bunch more videos to talk about. The next one is Curtis Cantwell, No Jumping Roofs, and this was also uploaded to our BMX. You might remember Curtis's name from that absolutely brutal brutal drop in off of a roof to like instant flip to face plant knockout video that came out a couple years ago same guy and this video had me saying jesus so many times from how crazy the stuff he was doing is and the slams that he was taking doing it i wouldn't be surprised if as soon as this video came out or anyone heard about it that bone death called him because he was doing roof drop after roof drop after big setup after like crazy grind stuff this is definitely one that i think anyone can appreciate for the gnarly factor alone then from there there's a bunch of videos i want to talk about but don't want to talk super in depth about we've got jack henneke's 2021 video from the secret bmx upload to the usl bmx youtube page this one had a clip on it featured on instagram where he's doing i think it was an opposite three tap or a regular three tap to opposite grind but it was a three tap at the top of a stair set to grind down a ledge i think it was down the stairs which is really really cool then we had usl bmx's bike dice with matt clausen and catfish this was probably the most entertaining one as you can imagine with catfish being involved then we had jonathan bronson's welcome to nowhere video which had a ton of pocket airs and big gaps and everything that Jonathan Bronson is known for and it's cool to see that Carl at Nowhere is helping him out. Then we had Daily Grind in Indianapolis followed by Tony Cherry nowadays from Date Night up north with Jack Sunderland from United then my edit that came out this past Monday for my Florida trip Ohio man in Florida if any of you haven't seen that yet and then we had a big time throwback here we had Brian Castillo's BMX Inferno s and I was gonna say DVD but no this was before DVDs s and full length video from 1995 I'm curious how many of you were around and riding BMX when this was new and saw this for the first time ever when it was new I really want to know that then we had some product stuff to talk about we had White House soft goods then we had a promo for Jake Seeley's Sunday Street Sweeper V2 tire Street Sweeper V2 tire. I forgot to add that in there. And then another promo, but this time is Brian Kaczynski's Globetrotter Signature GT frame. 
Both of these are a minute long and you know that both of these guys shred. So if you're a fan of either of them and you haven't yet checked those videos out, then we've got some interview things to talk about. First, an interview with Logan Martin and Vital BMX, kind of talking about the UCI Urban World Championships and how he won it and the two week quarantine he's got to do in a hotel room and lots of stuff surrounding these things and the Olympics and just a lot of different stuff that has to do with that. So I thought it was worth the listen. It's just over like 11 minutes long. So it's not too long and it's not too short. It's just the right amount to kind of be interested in paying attention to it throughout. And then there's a write up and interview over on Dig with John Quartz of Work BMX, which is titled Get to Work, a conversation about DIY BMX frame building. And I'm really psyched to see John get some more shine. I uploaded that video where I was just talking to him about Work BMX and getting a little bit of info. Now this comes out and I hope that things just keep growing and growing for him and he does better and better for himself. If you didn't know, John Quartz used to work at Solid and he also used to work at FBM as one of their main frame welders. And now he's got his own thing called Work BMX where he's making frames and he's trying to do it in an affordable price for people and he's also offering batches of frames to people so if like circuit bmx for example wanted to buy like 10 frames and then sell them as the circuit bmx frame that's an option the wheel mill also did it the wheel mill frames sold them through the wheel mill this is a really cool concept and i feel like it makes it more accessible to someone who may not have otherwise been able to do something like this for example my buddies trevor watching and dustin reese are starting up a bike company called tech bike co and i do have a bike check coming from dustin reese where he does talk a lot about the frame but they're starting this up in a world where without John Quartz and Work BMX and this opportunity, they might not be able to do that because they'd probably have to figure out a way to go overseas and figure out their frames, which is a very unique frame and get them right that way and the back and forth with that. And then the order quantities, who knows how many they'd have to order. So just the concept of this, I know I'm rambling about it, but I just wanna support John and I wanna get the info about what he's doing out there as much as possible. So that being said, let me know your guys' thoughts on the USA BMX freestyle team going into the Olympics or anything else that I talked about today. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this video enough that if you're new here or you haven't yet, you'll hit the subscribe button while you're down below leaving a comment and that'll mean we'll see you tomorrow for another video. Thanks for watching.